Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Sorry We're Closed, episode 22. Um, and I'm going to go through a little bit what it's like to go through the life of Pat Light right now. A lot of you know, you know my Twitter game and my Instagram game, um, but I don't, I'm not good at putting stuff up there daily um, as far as what I do. Uh, so we're going to do that. I also found out that we, I have somewhat of a loyal uh, following of, of customers at Green Rock that listen to the podcast, which I appreciate. Um, they are. De- I, I told the guy who told me I definitely did not uh, anticipate that. So I have been very forthcoming with some information about Green Rock and uh, nothing bad, but I probably will... Um, hold back a little bit more because my anticip- my my thought process was that uh, most of the listeners were coming from Boston area and Red Sox fans, as anyone would guess. Um, but now that I find out that we have a good a good amount of uh, Green Rock listeners, uh, you know, maybe I won't say say too much about what happens there uh, in the back behind the scenes at least, uh, at least too much. Uh, but I thank you guys for listening. I appreciate it. Um, I love drinking with you guys. You guys know I'm uh, not bashful about the drinks that I have over there. And I'm very happy that you guys come all the time. It has been a long road for Green Rock uh, this past summer. And to see the people that have come out so far this fall and um, shown support, uh, it's been awesome. So I do I do appreciate you guys for those that are listening. And the people that aren't listening, I appreciate you too. Even though you'll never hear this. So it's like it. Uh, anyway. Uh, the life of uh, of a retired baseball player is an interesting one, at least the one I've led. You know, I know a lot of guys get back into coaching, um, st- try to stay in the game somewhat. I did have interest somewhat to try to go into the front office, um, but you know, I, I didn't have. I know how guys start in that world. At least I don't know if I would have started there. Maybe I would, because I played, uh, I would have started at a different level. But uh, you know, I didn't have any interest really in in going through the ranks in that in that way to kind of get up to that that level. Um, but yeah, I had a, I had a lot of interest uh, in that, but I, I kind of pushed it off. But I always knew well the one thing that I told everyone, even when I was in baseball, that when I was done playing, I had looked forward to making baseball fun again. Uh, baseball was was really fun when you're good, but still, even that is stressful. You know, you're you're constantly fighting for a job. You're when you're good. I mean, you don't really get the high anywhere else in life than when you're you're playing really well. Um, and, and, and throwing the ball really well at AAA and the big league level. It, it is not quite anything that I can think of that would um, that I could help uh, describe for you to make you guys understand that feeling. It is unbelievable. But there's also you know no real lows uh, to compare, and at least I, I've experienced in the outside world yet. Um, so I knew that I wanted baseball to kind of be back to being a hobby and something that I enjoyed watching. I love sitting down at Green Rock now on the nights that I manage and watching the Mets or watching the Red Sox or watching even watching the Yankees, even though I'm not technically a fan of the Yankees. Um, you know, it's still fun to watch baseball. I, I, I enjoy watching the game of baseball a lot. Um, so I always wanted to do that. So I wanted to get out of baseball. And you guys know I've told you the story about how I got into the restaurant game with Saku and now Green Rock. Um, but the the day-to-day life, it's, it's a very interesting life. Um, and some, some things that, I, you know, I always t- I, I tell some people that are close to me that my partners at Green Rock sometimes don't understand. Uh, they think that you know I'm the fun partner who's this you know cool dude uh, that you know just drinks and has a great time owns owns you know the majority share of the place um, and you know doesn't really do anything. Uh, but in reality, in actuality, if they ever and when eventually this comes where I pass on my duties over Green Rock, they're gonna they're in for a rude awakening. Um, for the things that I have to do for this business just to make it run. Um, so, you know, my partners can order liquor. My partners can, you know, make a nice setup for the parking lot and, and so on and so forth. Um, a lot of this wouldn't have been allowed if, uh, you know, if we didn't, if I didn't do the stuff that I do in the back to kind of propel that. And I do more for Green Rock in, the, in Monday through Thursday than I do at all when you guys see me on the weekends. And when I'm sitting there having a Jameson shot with someone or I'm walking around making sure that everyone's social distancing or wearing masks or I'm, I'm putting out a, a, a fire with the employees. Maybe some the employees don't like each other, you know, whatever. You know, that's, that's small stuff in comparison to what I have to do during the week. 
Um, and it's, it's not that it's a bad thing, gig. I actually enjoy it. Um, I've made a life for myself in the connections that I've made in my life. And I can, my number one goal almost every day is to continue to make connections with people because in reality, that, that is what's propelled me in my life. And that is what has got me to the level that I am now. Um, and I, I want to keep going. You know, Green Rock is not where I want to be, you know, in a year from now, two years from now, even. You know, I have aspirations to go in a much bigger, bigger role in in this world and country or whatever. Um, you know, I want to. You know, I always said I want to be the billion. I want to be a billionaire, and I still I still stand by that. I want to be that guy. I know sometimes billionaires are looked about as as poorly now, but I mean. You know, I, I remember there's a quote by Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos said um, that uh, people get all mad at me now that I'm 160, you know, billion, whatever, billion dollars, you know, he's whatever he has over there. Um, but people forget, like, how many years, you know, when you ordered something from Amazon, it was me, you know, packing it up and bringing it to UPS or FedEx. Like, people just see where you're at now and want to hate on you and stuff like that. They don't understand the, the grind of it and what, where where you go and where and how you got there and the reason you're there and the reason you have what you had is because of the grind that you went through and 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 the things that you did in order to get to that level so you know I look you know I own two restaurants now partners partners in two restaurants now um and I'm trying to add to that I've always considered myself I thought a, a fairly good investor with my money um and so far so tr- so so good and I hope to continue that. You know, I'm always looking for that next thing. We've had restaurants already in Hoboken approach us uh, about buying into their places and taking over their places. I don't have any interest in 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 running another restaurant. I don't want Green Rock to be the last one of that. But I definitely don't think that, you know, at the end of my my career and when I'm kind of just sitting back and relaxing, I, I think I'll probably own five to ten restaurants, um, partners in them, not 100%, but, you know, but partners in five to ten restaurants that are, are you know, bringing me dividends and then the stock market, which I absolutely adore doing. Um, and not obviously not like David day trades does it. Uh, although I'm not sure David day trades does it the way he, you know, that's a character he's putting on. Um, but who knows, maybe he does. Uh, but you know, the, this is where I want to go in my life. I want to go, I'm trying to, I look at life as kind of like a video game in the sense that I'm trying to beat the game. And I talk to my brother all the time who also does his own business. Um, how, they always say like the journey is the fun, most fun part, and that's kind of you know annoying to hear all the time. But in reality, I, the way I look at it is the video game is you know playing the video game is the most fun. When you win it, you're like, oh, what the hell do I do now? Like it's not like yeah, of course, great, I won the game, but it's playing the game that's fun and trying to trying to get to that next step and trying to get to that next level um, is always great. I'm always looking, especially now with with the coronavirus. You know, I coronavirus is a terrible thing and all those things happen, but as an investor, I look at it as an opportunity for me. There are there are things out there right now that are cheap um, that I can go get and add to the portfolio at a price that I wouldn't be able to add to it later, and let it appreciate, let it bring in income, all of those good things. Um, the life of Pat Light is 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 a fun one, but it's also um, a lot more in depth than I think people think. Um, you know, I'm on the phone with the state all the time. I'm on the phone with the city of Hoboken all the time. The police department I'm talking to probably almost daily. Um, and if for no other reason, just building those relationships so that you can, I can get somewhere in life. You know, building relationships with people in power is always good. It's never a bad thing. You know, just let's put it in a very easy example at Green Rock. If I'm, you know, me and my one partner who lives in Red Bank are the majority partners over at Green Rock. My partner in Red Bank does not come up here, although I keep him briefed on everything that's happening because he has, a, a, you know, 10x the experience that I have in the restaurant industry. So when I have questions, I always I always bring it to him, and I also don't like to get him let him get blindsided by things that something big is happening. So but he's never up here. So it would pay if if someone in my in one of my employees was looking to um, was looking to you know, grow in the company, grow in Green Rock. The great Green Rock has always been, has been, has been people come in to bartend, great bartenders that people like end up buying into the business and they own the place and manage the place for a few years and then they, they, then it goes again, you know, and just keeps on going and going. That's why we have a million partners at Green Rock. 
But the the that if it that was your goal to become an owner and to become part of Green Rock and then grow from there, wherever, or maybe that's the ceiling. That's maybe that's all you want to do. Um, it would be wise of you to be to be not sucking up to me, but to build a relationship with me. I still not, might not choose you, you know, just because you know I'm still going to choose the person I believe is best for the business, but. It makes sense to build a relationship with me so that I can have an idea of whether or not I want to use you or not. I want to, I, you know, when, I, when I step down or when my other partner steps down from this position, who, do I, who am I going to fill that role with? Um, so I do that same type of thing in, in, regular, in, in life. You know, I build relationships with people in the state. I build relationships with people in the city. You never know where people are going to be. You know, I build relationships with other bar owners. Um, building relationships is the one thing that I've always, always seen yield results, and it always yields results. Um, showing, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk always talks about show, you know, bringing the other person value. I don't know always what the value it is that I can bring to people. Um, I, I'm, I might not know, unless I can do research on you or what, or what have you, or I might not be able to bring value to you right now knowingly. But maybe in four years, after we build a friendship of four years, maybe I'm I'm there might be something you're doing now that I can bring a lot of value to that can bring a lot of value to me, um, and that in and of itself is where you where where you at least where I have seen the best results in growing your life, um, and I think that is something that a lot of people you know, miss out on. I mean, they talk about, you know, talking sales, like, you know, all the deals are done on the golf course at the bar, right? Because people want to do business with people they like. You know, I like to do business at Green Rock with people that I like. Um, I don't, you know, people that annoy the hell of me, I don't even think about giving them their my business or anything like that. I don't think of, I don't think of them when I go do something else. You know, the amount of people that come up to me that ask, hey, when you do your next restaurant, let me know, I'd love to be in. You know, that's a, there's a lot of people that do that. I don't have any interest in it. But there's a lot of people that do that. Um, and I think, I think people forget that sometimes. And I think people forget that when I'm at the bar and you're drinking, having fun, it's not just because I'm there to want to have a drink. I'm there trying to do that. I mean, you know, my, my relationship building in the restaurant industry started at Green Rock. I wouldn't own Green Rock. I wouldn't own Saku if it wasn't for Green Rock and meeting people there and probably not being annoying. Um, I'm sure and me heading play for the Red Sox helped, uh, but not never causing any issues over there. All of those things play a role into when now when someone wants to go do a restaurant, they're like, oh, listen, you know, Pat would be a great addition to this, right? Not to mention on social, you know, what I do on social, you know, you guys see me post all the time and, and on Twitter and all that stuff. You know, I'm trying to do something where now my social creates value for people. You know, having a guy that has X amount of followers and this many impressions in that world creates value for people. And I think that sometimes when people listen to guys like Gary Vaynerchuk, they think, oh, you know, you know, how do I produce value to Gary? I don't know. Really, I have no clue. Gary's, you know, a hundred millionaire, whatever the hell he is. He's got three businesses. He's got a huge corporation that that's working for him. You know, what can me and you give a guy like Gary? What can me and you give a guy like Jamie Dimon, who is the CEO of J.P. Morgan? You know, what can me and you do for a guy like Warren Buffett or Bill Gates? Or, you know, we're talking about the biggest people in the world or even a Mark Cuban. Or what could I even do for the mayor of Hoboken? Or what could I even do for the governor of New Jersey? You know, where can I grow? You know, what can I do to produce value for these people? And that in and of itself is what takes you from step by step. You know, I might not be able to produce value right now for Gary Vaynerchuk or Mark Cuban, but if I produce value for the bar owner across the street and was able to do that, and then a bigger guy wants me to, oh, can you do that for me? And then you move up next level, and then you're doing it. Maybe the mayor of Hoboken, um, you know, you know needs needs a, needs a favor to help him do something in town or what have you. And then so we, oh, okay, well, I, you know, the restaurants would love to help you do this for you. You know, we'll, we'll bring food for this, this event. That'd be cool. It'd be good advertising for us. And now I've done it. I, you know, we do a favor for you. And now maybe he's more likely to introduce me to someone that, because he likes me. So, oh, we'll bring, you know, I got someone important coming. I'll bring him over to Green Rock or Saku because, you know, we'll know Pat will take care of us and it'll be a good impression of the city of Hoboken on us. Boom, done. You know, 
all of those things are helpful. And it's helpful to bring yourself to that next level. Um, and that's what I do. That is literally what I do. I build relationships uh, for myself, for other people. Um, it, is, it is, you know, I think it's the number one thing you can do to yield the best results for you throughout life. Granted, you have to be smart. You have to be intelligent. You have to be able to produce value for people. You have to do all those things. But it, if you can do those, if you can deliver the relationships are, are what's going to propel you in your life. At least in, in my life, that's what I've seen. Um, and in an ex-baseball player, you know, obviously I have a little bit of easy, easier um, easier way sometimes because people want to meet me sometimes because they're a Red Sox fan or they just like pro baseball, whatever. Um, so, yeah, of course I have it a little bit easier at times. But, you know, there comes there's also comes... You know, people who think that you're dumb because you play baseball, or you're, or you're oh, you just you just own a bar. Okay, yeah, nice, sweet investment, bro. You know, like how many people told me that you I shouldn't buy a bar? You know, of course, you, you don't know you don't know you're speaking from an uneducated standpoint on this particular bar or this particular investment. Um, and I think that uh, if you really get down to the bolts of it, it's and then you know it's going to be the the relationships. Um, you know, Monday through Thursday, build relationships with the city, build relationships with the state, uh, and then Friday through Sunday, bring build relationships with your customers, build relationships with people in the town. You never know who you're meeting in there. You never know who you're talking to. You never who, know you just did a favor by getting a table for this person. You know, you know, you may you don't know who their friends are going to be. You don't know who you're. Who you're, you know they, but people remember these things. And next thing you know, you know you got someone who who is in a position of power that now likes you, that wants to help you, that wants to you know, has a position. Hey, listen. I think you do really good for this. Why don't you, you know, why don't you give this guy a call and, and and hope that maybe you can get that position? But you never would have known about that position without this or that. You know, it's all it's all it's all inner working, all collateral. It's all collateral damage or you know intended consequences or unintended consequences of certain movements that you you position yourself to do. So anyway, guys, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, Thank you for tuning in. Also, uh, I want to give you a quick heads up. This is, comes comes out Monday. You know, people that are listening, you know, see me on Twitter or Instagram. Make sure you DM me or tweet at me some uh, questions you guys have, anything you guys want me to talk about. I'd be more than happy to. We are now on episode twenty two, um, and I'm talking to myself for twenty two episodes now. Uh, or I guess I've had a few a few uh, a few uh, what's it called guests on. But you know. Tweet at me, you know, tell me some questions, tell me some things you'd like me to talk about. Uh, I'd be more than happy to do that. I'm curious as to what you guys are curious about in my life um, and, and how I handle things or, or anything for that matter. So uh, definitely do that. Tweet at me. Guys, go you know, follow me on all those socials. You guys already do. Everyone that's listening to me definitely already follows me on all those socials. Um, and then until next time, guys, I'll see you at the bar.